our tutorial, Philips Parent Test. First order trend stationary time series consists of random processes that have constant mean which don't exhibit trend pattern. This topic is part of purse training analysis with our curse. Feel free to take a look at curse curriculum by clicking link at the description box below. This tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of trading or investment advice. Please read full tutorial disclaimer at the end of this video. Philips parent test consists of evaluating whether time series was first order trend stationary with null hypothesis that it had a unit root and was not stationary. For full reference, I recommend that you read Philips and Perrin, Testing for a Unit Root in Time Series Regression, published by Biometrica in 1988. As a formula, we have that current period data difference is equal to a constant plus beta coefficient multiplied by a trend variable. This trend is a sequence from 1 all the way to the number of observations, plus a gamma coefficient multiplied by previous period's data, plus this regression forecasting errors or residuals. And then we have three options. Option A, constant equals to zero, and beta equals to zero, therefore Philips parent test without a constant and without a trend variable. Option B, constant different to zero, and beta equals to zero, therefore Philips parent test with a constant but without a trend variable. And C, constant different to zero, and beta different to zero, therefore Philips parent test with a constant and with a trend variable. And what we're testing is gamma coefficient, heteroscedasticity, and autocorrelation consistent t-statistic approximated p-value. If gamma coefficient, heteroscedasticity, and autocorrelation consistent t-statistic approximated p-value was less than alpha level of statistical significance, then time series was first order trend stationary with 1 minus alpha level of statistical confidence. On the other hand, if gamma coefficient, heteroscedasticity, and autocorrelation consistent t-statistic approximated p-value was greater than alpha level of statistical significance, then higher differentiation order needed for first order trend stationary time series with 1 minus alpha level of statistical confidence. Great. So let's go into our studio so that we can study Philips parent test with greater detail. Excellent. So here we are within R Studio. In this tutorial, we'll be working within R Tutorial Philips Parent Test Code File. So the first step within the tutorial is to load its packages. This is done with the library function, and in the tutorial, we'll be using QuantMod and T Series. So we select those two code lines, then we click Run or Ctrl Enter on the keyboard, which is equivalent. So the following step is to create data for Philips Parent Test, which is done through data reading. So we create the object name data, which is equal to read.csv, and within it we have the name of the data file, Philips parent test data, as a plain text file with .csv or comma separated values, and stored within the working directory, comma header equals to true. So we select the code line, then we click run or control enter on the keyboard, which is equivalent, and this creates a data object within the global environment as a data frame. So we click on the spreadsheet kind of icon, and this opens the data for us. Within it, we have two columns of data. First of these dates, dates with a daily frequency from the beginning of 2007 all the way to the end of 2016, therefore 10 years of data. Then we have EWG adjusted. EWG corresponds to the ETF investment vehicle, which intends to replicate the MSCI Germany country index. And adjusted because this includes adjusted close prices, which were adjusted for dividends and splits. So back into the code file, the following step is we are going to convert that data into an XTS, XTS which stands for Extensible Time Series. So we overwrite it, and this data is going to be XTS, and we select from data the second column with those adjusted close prices, comma order by equals as date, data the first column with those dates, and we're going to rename its column names with COL names of data, GER for those German prices. So we select the two code lines, and then we click Run or Ctrl Enter on the keyboard, which is equivalent. So notice that the data object is now an XTS within the global environment, and if we reopen it, we see the same data, but now the dates became its index. So back into the code file, the following step is we're going to do the delimiting of training and testing ranges. 
training range commonly done for purse identification and purse spread co-integration evaluation and testing range for purse trading strategies evaluation. So here we're going to first create T data, that's the training range, which is data from the beginning of the time series all the way to the end of 2014, therefore the first eight years of data. And then we have F data or the testing range, and it's going to be data from the beginning of 2015 to the end of the time series, the last two years of data. Notice that this training and testing range is delimiting was only included for educational purposes, therefore it is not fixed and it can be modified according to your needs. So we select the two code lines, then we click run or constraints on the keyboard. Within this tutorial, we'll only be working within the training range. So the following step is we're going to visualize those prices chart. In this case, we're going to create this new object named TGER or German prices within the training range, which is going to be equal to T data. And we're going to visualize it with plot of those German prices within the training range with the title of the chart as German prices within the training range prices chart. So we select these two code lines then click run or control enter on the keyboard and notice that we have the chart right here. So let's go ahead and zoom into it. So as we can see, we have German prices within the training range chart. On the vertical axis, we have adjusted close prices. On the horizontal one, we have dates from the beginning of 2007 all the way into the end of 2014, therefore the training range. So let's close this chart. And the following step is we are going to perform Philips parent test. So notice here that we have the function named PP test, and we're going to do it for those German prices within the train range. The alternative is equal to stationary, and the type it's going to be a ZT alpha. Notice that the parameters included within this function were only included for educational purposes and example, therefore they're not fixed and they can be modified according to your needs. So what we're doing here is a Phillips parent test for German prices within the train range. And this is a Phillips parent test, which is going to include a constant and also a trend variable. So we select the code line, then we click run or enter on the keyboard. I notice that the results have been printed within the console. So we have Phillips parent unit root test done for that data, which is German prices within the train range. Then we have the set T alpha test statistic the truncation lag parameter, and that's the one related with the heteroscedasticity and autocorrelation consistent T statistic estimation. And then we have right here, the p-value. This is the p-value related to the test mentioned within the slides. And as we can see, the alternative hypothesis stationary. Perfect. So now that we finished starting Phillips parent test, let's go back into the slides. And as mentioned previously, this tutorial has an educational and informational purpose and doesn't constitute any type of trading or investment advice. Please pause the video now so you can read the full tutorial disclaimer. Okay, so with this, we finished this tutorial. Thank you for watching.